So welcome everybody. We're going to be talking about the paradigm split and what it means to you. We're going to do a brief introduction. We're going to talk about the Akashic Records. We're going to talk about the event that began this whole story. We're going to talk about the process and how it works and we're going to close with a DNA meditation. So get yourself comfortable and we hope you enjoy. What is the paradigm shift and who am I? I'm Angel Rosa Grady. I've been an Akashic Record reader for over 35 years. I was a tarot reader before that, and I was a meditator, and I'd spontaneously find myself in my records. And so I learned to read them, and that's predominantly what I do now. I'm also an author. I've written two books. That's the first book I wrote called A Time of Change. The second one is Love, Miracles, and Original Creation. And then that we have a volume series, Answers from the Akashic Records, of which 12 are published, 100 to be published. So what are the Akashic Records? The Akashic Records are best known to be an ancient librarian spirit where everything we've ever done is recorded. It's not only everything we've ever done, it's the entire history of creation. It's also considered the field of all that is, and it's the imprint of creation as it happens. So in the Akashic Records, you can find all information ever since creation began. And also you can find the history of your own soul, your soul's progress through time, who you are as a spirit, your soul evolution, how you're doing, your various lifetimes are there. And one of the best ways I explain it as well is that when people have a near-death experience and they say they see their life flash in front of them, what they're seeing is their Akashic records unfolding. So about the paradigm split, this is how it began. This is the story, and I'm being really clear that I'm calling it a split and not a shift. I know many people today are talking about the shift into the fifth dimension. This is not what this is about. This is a paradigm split. So the story goes is my beloved Ahano and I were driving home from California one Christmas, on our way back to Bend, Oregon, this was in January 2019, and I looked out the car window and suddenly everything became black and white. I was watching cars go by in black and white, I would see people on streets in black and white, and it had a very, let's say, surreal or unreal feeling to it, as if I was watching a movie that was just a projection of people's minds that had no reality to it at all. This was very disconcerting because it didn't leave. It was this way all the way home. And even when I got back to Bend, I'd look out the tree in my backyard and it would dissolve into pixels and then come back together again, moment by moment. I didn't really know what was happening, but along with this experience, every belief that I ever had, all of my 40 years of spiritual, being on a spiritual path, all of a sudden meant nothing. I felt like I knew nothing. And Hannah would tell me about different things that were coming in in his inbox, different forms of healing. People were discovering different methods. And I would say, it's all nonsense. None of it's real. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't do what people think it does. And I was pretty sour grapes at that time. Um, but I didn't understand what was happening, stuff that my whole identity was being taken apart. Everything I thought I was, thought I knew, was disappearing. And what was even worse is that the 3D world had no meaning to me anymore. I felt like it was all made-believe, make-up, you know, make-believe. It had no reality to it, nothing permanent. And uh, it was quite discouraging because I couldn't be motivated about anything. I had no passion for anything anymore. So after like two weeks of this, you know, I kept asking Source, What's happening here? And finally I got an answer and it said, pick which paradigm you want to live in because the earth is splitting. And I clearly understood what Source meant by that. You know, basically it said there's two paradigms happening right now in 3D. One is a death paradigm and one is an, an eternal life paradigm. And that it was time to choose which one you wanted to live in because wherever you decided you were going to put yourself, that's where you were going to be. So under the death paradigm, what are we talking about? So we're talking about nature and all things that are coded to death. So if you look around 
it's obvious that everything here dies. Nothing here is permanent. Uh, people are out for their own survival. Animals are out for their own survival. It's the belief in guilt, punishment, suffering, and sacrifice. It's the need, the feeling the need to earn everything, that you have to earn your worthiness, you have to earn your money. Uh, it's, the, it's the paradigm of sickness, of suffering, of blame, and karma. It also uh, encompasses all the hierarchy and authority figures, all religions, all beliefs in original sin, and the grief of living in a temporary world. And so what I was aware of is that everyone has this unconscious grief about the fact that everything you do here is lost at some point. Every person you love is gone at some point. You're gone at some point. There's nothing permanent that you can enjoy. You can have temporary moments of happiness, but they don't last. So let's talk about the reverse, the eternal life paradigm, which is what Source is telling us is, our, is a choice. In the eternal life paradigm, it's eternal love. It's love is the all-abiding force of all creation. It's permanent. There's no death. There's only health and abundance. There's trust in love as a sustaining force. And what I mean by that is love as the, as the creation of the universe never ends. You can't destroy it. It'll never be harmed. No matter what happens, it'll never be harmed. And so to have the ability to trust in this presence as a force that will sustain you in your life, as a force that you can turn to, is what is in the eternal love eternal life, eternal love paradigm. It's a belief in goodness, and it's a belief in innocence of all life. And just imagine what it feels like to be accepted completely, all the time, always, by everything, no matter what you've ever done. That someone is there loving you, no matter what. It's, it's In the eternal life paradigm, there's no competition or fight for survival. It's a knowledge of yourself, as a spirit within a body and it also goes into the temple of the body where God is within, literally within everybody. So what happens when you make the choice? So what we're being asked to do is to choose which paradigm we want to live in. Well what happens when you make the choice? Because of course after I was shown this the choice was obvious. I told Source I choose the eternal life paradigm. And even the Course in Miracles, for those of you who study in the Manual of Teachers, there's a whole section on death. It talks about the unreality of death, and it makes the point to say, what kind of a loving God would watch its creations return to dust and suffer? Not a loving God. So death is really a creation of ourselves. We cause our own death. And even Sandra Ray, who one of the founders of rebirthing, said all death is suicide. So it's pretty shocking when you start to embrace that idea that death isn't natural. Now, there's many people who have argued with me on this topic, especially about nature. It's the natural way and all this and that. But not when you see animals of recent years who are natural enemies suddenly are friends, suddenly are protecting each other, suddenly are laying together. So something is happening in our world. What happens when you choose that paradigm? So before we get into the eternal love paradigm in greater detail, I want to get the point across on how all-encompassing the death paradigm is. And I'm going to read the section on death from A Course in Miracles, but I'm doing it to make the point. And the point is that I want you to understand how encoded the belief in death is within us. It's from A Course in Miracles and the Manual for Teachers. What is death? Death is the central theme from which all illusions stem. Is it not madness to think of life as being born, aging, losing vitality, and dying in the end? We have asked this question before, but now we need to consider it more carefully. It is the one fixed, unchangeable belief of the world 
that all things in it are born only to die. This is regarded as the way of nature, not to be raised to question, but to be accepted as the natural law of life. The cyclical, the changing and unsure, the undependable and the unsteady, waxing and waning in a certain way upon a certain path, all of this is taken as the will of God. And no one asks if a benign creator could will this. In this perception of the universe as God created it, it would be impossible to think of him as loving. For who has decreed that all things pass away, ending in dust and disappointment and despair, can but be feared? He holds your little life in his hand, but by a thread, ready to break it off without regret or care, perhaps today. Or, if he waits, yet is the ending certain. Whoever loves such a God knows not of love, because he has denied that life is real. Death has become life's symbol. His world is now a battleground, where contradiction reigns and opposites make endless war. Where there is death is peace impossible. So I know as I'm reading this, this could all sound very depressing. When we look at the reality of this is the way the world is, this is what we believe, this is what we see happen. But I promise you, going towards the end of this, we're going to talk about the eternal life paradigm, which is the total opposite of what I'm reading you now. And you'll see the reason why I'm having this discussion today. Because this is what I was shown on my way back to Oregon. We're shown just how illusory the world is, how black and white, how meaningless, how crazy really it is, and all the emotions that went with that. So death is the symbol of the fear of God. His love is blotted out in the idea, which holds from awareness like a shield held up to obscure the sun. The grimness of the symbol is enough to show It cannot coexist with God. It holds an image of the Son of God in which he is laid to rest in devastation's arms, where worms wait to greet him and to last a little while by his destruction. Yet the worms as well are doomed to be destroyed as certainly. And so do all things live because of death. Devouring is nature's law of life. God is insane, and fear alone is real. And even if you take a look at this, devouring is nature's law of life. You see it everywhere. You see it in the way we consume. You see it in the way animals kill each other for consumption. We kill animals. Animals kill other animals. Everything is designed to devour something. This is not God's will. This is not a quality of eternal love. But it's obvious, too, that we don't know what eternal love is because we're not living that way. It continues, and it says, The curious belief that there is part of dying things that may go on apart from what will die does not proclaim a loving God nor reestablish any grounds for trust. If death is real for anything, there is no life. Death denies life. But if there is reality in life, death is denied. No compromise in this is possible, which is what I was shown. I was shown that the choice is all-encompassing. It's complete. If you choose the death paradigm, that's the world you're living in. If you choose the eternal love paradigm, that's a whole different world. There is either a God of fear or one of love. The world attempts a thousand compromises and will attempt a thousand more. Not one can be acceptable to God. In other words, you can make all these compromises that you want and make all these attempts to say both are true, that God is love, but death is real. And this is saying you can't do that. 
because love does not demand death. So God did not make death because he did not make fear. Both are equally meaningless to him. So the reality of death is firmly rooted in the belief that we are a body. If God created bodies, death would indeed be real. But God could not be loving. There is no point at which the contrast between the perception of the real world and that of the world of illusions becomes more sharply evident. Death is indeed the death of God, if he is love. And now his own creation must stand in fear of him. He is not father, but destroyer. He is not creator, but avenger. Terrible are his thoughts and fearful his image. To look on his creations is to die. And this needs to be said too because I watched my dad. You know, my dad was a very strong Catholic. And when he was dying, you could tell that he had this fear of the what if. He had thought he had lived a good life. He had done all the things the religions told him to do. But in his last few months, you could tell that he was terrified that he might be judged. This is what makes this point. It's like, if you believe that God created death, then you have to be in fear of him. This continues and says, but the last thing to be overcome will be death. Of course, without the idea of death, there is no world. Now think of that for a second. Without the idea of death, there is no world. All dreams will end with this one. This is salvation's final goal, the end of all illusions. And in death are all illusions born. What can be born of death and still have life? But what is born of God and still can die? The inconsistencies, the compromises, and the rituals the world fosters in its vain attempt to cling to death and yet to think love real, are mindless magic, ineffectual and meaningless. God is, and in him all created things must be eternal. Do you not see that otherwise he has an opposite, and fear would be as real as love? And I've known many times when I've been in the Akashic Records and we've been doing the group things, there was a topic about love one time. And we asked Source about love, and it went on to say that love has no opposite. There's nothing that's the opposite of love. It can't be destroyed. It can't be harmed. And they made the point that there's this one consistent presence in the universe, which we call God, which is love. And that is eternal. So our one assignment is to accept no compromise in which death plays a part. Do not believe in cruelty, nor let attack conceal the truth from you. And it continues, and it says, What seems to die has but been misperceived and carried to illusion. Now it becomes your task to let the illusion be carried to the truth. Be steadfast, but in this, be not deceived by any reality of any changing form. Truth neither moves nor wavers, nor sinks down to death and dissolution. And what is the end of death? Nothing but this, the realization that you are guiltless now and forever. Nothing but this, but do not let yourself forget It is not less than this. So we will be talking about the eternal life paradigm and the trust in God and the belief in innocence and what it involves. What happened to me, along with the stripping of my identity as I knew it and coming to the awareness that I I don't know what this sort of love is. I've never known. I've had human love, of course, but I don't know eternal love. And I certainly don't know it as something that I feel I could turn my life over to and trust completely. So as I made this choice, it had certain effects. 
Along with this experience that I had, I also had a deepening sense of love within me. It was very strange. It was like I, I had a stronger, gentler love for everything, which was all encompassing. So the effects of that was I no longer wanted to watch the news. I didn't want to watch anything that had any kind of a conflict to it. I had no opinions about those things. I was only interested in peace. When people would have an argument or people would debate things, I didn't care. I had no opinion. I was totally neutral. Especially lately, of course, of the politics of late in our world, people were animated about who was running for what and who's who and what they were doing. I had no opinion. I was completely neutral and peaceful during this process, even though a lot of what I knew was gone. So in this process, when you choose a, a, a different paradigm, what it really means is the death paradigm starts to dissolve within you. And if you can think for a moment how every cell in our bodies is coded to death, it's literally in our DNA. We have programs and codes for death. So when you choose out of that and you're saying you're choosing eternal life, what starts to happen is all these memories start surfacing. This is what happened to me like a weekend after I'd made this decision. I started remembering things from my childhood that I never knew I remembered. Little incidences with my dad or with my mom or places that I went that I consciously could never remember. I went through everybody in my life who's passed away. I went through some pretty tragic deaths early on in my life and I was reliving those moment by moment, minute by minute, in every striking detail. And I thought, well, what is happening? Am I dying? Am I dying also? Is that why I'm going through these people who've passed away? I really didn't know. It was only later that Source said, well, of course, if you choose the eternal love paradigm, then everything within you that is not that is going to surface to be released. And it's really a cellular process. It's actually a biological cellular process of purification that you start to go through. And indeed, that's what we're in, in the bigger picture in the world right now. What I was told in January of 2019 is actually the split that's going on in the world now. What it encompasses also is, I'm because I'm an Akashic Record reader, I had many clients who called me for readings who are also going through this. I realized it was worldwide. People were calling me up and saying, I'm so confused, what is happening to me? Other people would say, I picked up and moved my house into another country. What am I doing in Australia? Or someone else would say, my house just burnt down. I've lost everything. Other people would say, I've had the extreme urge to clean out everything in my home, give away stuff I didn't need anymore. And relationships were breaking up. Some were getting closer, some were breaking up, careers were ending, people weren't satisfied with what they were doing anymore. Everybody seemed to be going through this purification. This is all encompassing, it's still continuing now, we're watching it as earth changes, we're watching it as changes in politics, we're watching it in the cosmos, because some of this energy is stimulated by the cosmos. What sources says, you have to understand forgiveness, that's where we're being led. That's part of the purification. So what is forgiveness and sources viewpoint? Well, it isn't about that somebody did something to hurt you and now you're being a good guy and you're saying it's okay. Forgiveness is all encompassing in the way source is talking about it. It literally means erasing. So if you had a chalkboard and you had a list of everything in the death paradigm that people go through, basically it's the ego's world and you took an eraser and you erased it all as if it never existed. That's what forgiveness is, what Source is talking about. So we're forgiving the idea of guilt entirely. And I mean the idea, the belief in it as a reality. We're choosing to see only love. It's the choice for innocence. Now what does innocent mean? It means that everybody is innocent in the core of their being as Source created everyone as an innocent being. So no matter how somebody behaves, how badly they behave, how programmed they are to misbehave, the truth is, is everybody is innocent at their core. And so we're choosing to see that in somebody, no matter what. This is why sources told me, for example, that the death penalty is not God's will. And the reason it isn't 
is because we rob somebody the chance for redemption when we do that. Also implies forgiving ourselves, forgiving the past and letting it go entirely from the DNA. So it's not easy to forgive ourselves. Everyone can look back on their past with regrets, some more than others, and sometimes it cycles around year after year, or we have grief that we haven't healed. So it's not easy. The process is easy in concept, but it's not easy to do because you have to constantly be re-choosing love because you're in an ego world, you're in an ego thought system, We've been programmed ever since ever to believe in original sin, to believe that guilt is real, that we have to earn God's love, that we have to be good people in order to get to quote unquote heaven. And I'll bring you back to when I was in Ireland also, St. Bridget is the well-known saint in Ireland. And when we were there last, we were there last March and we were there till July, we were going to do workshops on this process to help people through this process. She basically said, we're not just forgiving the death paradigm. We're forgiving the distortions that have occurred in the DNA of humans. It's almost like it's asking us to wipe the DNA clean and restore the eternal life beings that we really are. And this is also in our bodies, like I mentioned earlier, that we have a divine temple and well, there's lots of belief systems that say the body's nothing, you don't need it. But the truth is, is when they say God is within you, they mean it literally. It's, it's your kundalini, your life force energy that's within your body. It's the force of nature within you. And it has the ability to turn you into an eternal life being once it's activated. And how do you activate it? Well, you do have to go through purifying everything within you that is in the way. Some people use that going through blocks, but I want you to think of it as a DNA process. That regeneration has to be shifting from the death paradigm completely in your mind, in your heart, in your behavior, and shifting over to eternal love. At the end of this, we're gonna do a DNA meditation. It's gonna be a guided meditation where we're gonna take you into your DNA spiral, and we're gonna help you locate areas in your DNA that are coded to death. They'll show up as dark spots, perhaps. Perhaps you'll have a memory stimulated. You could have a past life memory, but it's all designed to help you replace that. Well, actually press the delete button, just like you would on a computer. Press the delete button. And I can't stress enough the effects of these choices. They may sound simple, but because thoughts are creative, because consciousness is everything, that the universe listens when you say something. Your body listens when you say something. Whatever you tell it to do, it will do. It just does what it thinks you want. Your brain does what it thinks you want. So when you make a decision, you have to know what you're doing. You have to say, well, I'm really choosing out of the world of suffering and ego and struggle, and I'm moving over to a paradigm of happiness, eternal love and peace and those have their own manifestations. When I used to do the Akashic Records, I used to do groups in Ireland. Around 2012, I started when people were asking, they'd come for a reading, but then they were asking bigger questions such as, well, what's happening with the Mayan calendar? What's happening with 2012? And, and so we decided to have groups. We met together once a week. We had people come only for the purpose of opening the records so they could ask these spiritual questions. And the answers we got from Source, who was really answering us, were astounding. So we recorded all these, and this is what my two books are. They are literally the transcripts of those meetings, questions people ask, the answers from Source. And they are your two free gifts for attending this talk today. And the first is the time of change. The second one is love, miracles, and original creation, where it goes into, goes into the brain. It goes into dreams. It goes into miracles, love, anything you can think of, who you really are, what's the deal with your, your kundalini and your DNA. So to download your free books, you just go to angelrose.com forward slash LTS 2021. That's Angel, A I N G E A L R O S E dot com forward slash L T S 
2021. We thank you for listening to my talk today. So thank you once again for attending. So before we go into the DNA meditation, I just want to stress that even though this meditation is simple and easy and guided, the effects of what you're doing is very powerful. As soon as you choose the eternal life paradigm and you look into your DNA and you cancel out codings for death in your DNA and you put the codings for eternal life in there, you can have a lot of things surface. And the reason for this is because the coding for death in our cells is so pervasive that once it starts changing, you can have all manner of things surface. And I think one of the best things is a feeling of lightness and joy. But you could also have body effects as this stuff is leaving your body. So I just want you to be aware of that before you do this. Because this is a choice for eternal love and happiness. And this is something that none of us have been in ever. This is a whole new paradigm of trust in love completely. A type of love that is eternal and nurturing and self-sustaining. So I just wanted to give you that little bit of heads up that this is a powerful meditation and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. And now we're going to do a group meditation together. This exercise will help you release parts of the death paradigm in your DNA and help you to move forward. So get yourself in a comfortable position. You want to turn off any cell phones, close any doors, any other distractions you might have. And allow yourself a quiet space for the next 15 minutes. Now as you're getting yourself settled, just start noticing the rhythm of your breathing as it goes in and out and in and out. Just be one with its flow. Allow yourself to get relaxed. Now imagine from where you're sitting that you're getting up and you're going out your back door and you're headed down a path that it's just your path. A path that you've created exactly as you'd like it to be. You might want to notice the ground that you're walking on the things that are around you. But just head down this path now. And after a time, you're going to come to an opening on the right side of your path. This opening is really a tunnel. It's a tunnel that leads underground and it's perfectly safe. So we're going to go down this tunnel now, all of us together. And I have a lantern in front of me. So the path is always illuminated in the tunnel. We're going to be heading down to a cave that's deep in the earth. And as we progress down, you might want to be aware of what the sides of the tunnel look like to you and how it feels as you make your way down. And as we're coming to the end of the tunnel, we see a platform that leads to the entrance of the cave. And the cave is closed by a round stone door The door slowly slides open to the right.
And now we're entering into this cave. And again, it's illuminated by the lantern I have in my hand. And we're going to come to a place where we can all sit in a circle. And we just take a place and sit. This is the place where we'll be doing our work today. And as we're sitting here, let's be aware of each other's presence. And be in communion with one another. With this intention today. And why I picked this cave is this is a cave that is a safe place for us. We're surrounded by the nurturing love of the earth. It's quiet. It's undisturbed by anything on the surface. It's a sacred place for us to be. And in case you've had any sort of stress getting here today, just sit quietly in the cave for a few minutes and absorb its peace and quiet and the communion that we have with one another. Now I want you to notice your own personal DNA spiral hovering in the air in front of you. You may notice its spiral. It may be turning slightly or it may be still and just appearing as a waveform. Whatever it is, you're going to look for the coatings of the death paradigm in your DNA spiral. You're going to do this just by making the intention that your DNA will show you where the codes for death are located. These codes may appear as dark spots of a purple wound of a particular emotion. Thoughts may appear, memories may surface. You may even have a past life memory come to the fore. Whatever it is, you're looking for the areas that are coded to death in your DNA. And I'll give you some time to do this. And as you go through this process, don't censor anything that may be surfacing. Just watch it, feel it. And then realizing that the cause of anything you may be experiencing is simply an old program. Offer this love and acceptance. By love and acceptance, I mean there's no blame or judgment about it. It's just a program. And now we're going to press a delete button on those programs. We've sent them love and acceptance. And now we're just going to press the delete button in our minds. And they're going to disappear from our DNA spiral. So go ahead and do this now. Now the 
that you've done this, you may notice now that there are holes in your DNA spiral where the death coding was. And we're going to replace those empty spots with a new program called the Eternal Life Program. So go ahead and insert this new program now into all those spots that have been left vacant by the releasing of the death program. We're just going to recode ourselves to the Eternal Life Program. Just notice as you do this any sensations in your body, any feelings, any new thoughts, any energy running. And this is now your new program for your DNA. You can do this meditation as many times as you wish, always with the same reprogramming to the eternal life spiral the eternal life paradigm realizing that each time you do this you are literally erasing and forgiving the death paradigm And as you're ready, let's slowly rise from our circle in silence and make our way out of the cave, out the door, and back up the tunnel, back up to your path, and head down your path back to your home and into your room where you began. And when you're ready, open your eyes and make any notes that you feel you need to make. Thank you.